Just um, uh, wanted to talk a little bit more this week about the pass rush and how things are coming together. Had a couple big plays, uh, Grady's sack and Dante's late. Um, where are they at, and is that a was that progression last week that you saw? Well, I just think that uh, guys are keep working on the stuff that we do. We're, we're trying to kind of. Um, kind of trying to do the same things over and over so we can learn to do them. You know, we aren't going in there, and I've learned from past coordinators and talking to guys over the years, guys that have been really, really good defensive coordinators in the past, that when you're trying to build something, you know, don't start going off the deep end and, okay, this isn't working, so we got to change that, and then we got to change this, and you got to change that. You end up changing all the time. Nobody ever becomes good at anything. Sometimes you got to go through some growing pains to get what you want. And, you know, I can name a lot of defensive coordinators that you guys all know and would probably put in the top four or five defensive coordinators maybe of all time. And they, sometimes they struggled the first season out with their scheme. And if don't believe me, look it up. And so, you know, you need to stay with the stuff and, and uh, get good at it and not just jump all over the place because then you're never going to get good at anything. So. I think we're going to keep. Hopefully, we're going to keep getting better and better at it. It was is, uh, maintaining rush lanes a big part of that, or knowing where everybody's at, and uh, uh, you know, in their you know effort to get to the quarterback. Well, it's all that stuff. It's pressures, making sure you have gap integrity when you run a pressure, and you know, because a lot of times it's not the. Sometimes it's not the pressure that actually does it. It's the offensive line that maybe messes it up. But if you're in the right spot, then let them mess it up and then be right. Don't guess and go in the wrong, think you're doing something that, that you shouldn't be doing. It, it's 11 guys always working together, whether it's coverage, whether it's, you know, and that, getting the quarterback to hold the ball a little longer and up for another step on the pass rush, or it's always hand in hand. It's never just one, one thing. And it, it could be four man rush, or it could be pressure or simulated pressure. It doesn't, doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. Who taught Grady that swim move? Grady. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody needs to take credit for that move. That was that was uh, that was Grady. Yeah, how do you handle game planning when you don't really know what they're going to do when it comes to Curtis Samuel, who's such a versatile piece? Like, does that what does that change? I guess. Uh, well, the biggest thing to me right now is is us more than it is almost somebody else. You know, you got to. You always have tendencies on teams, whether it's uh, or a certain guy or something, or a certain quarterback can do this, and a certain quarterback can do that, and you try to make the guys aware of it. And obviously, you always try, as a defensive coordinator, to put together a package that's going to try to take that away. But at the same time, it's really more about us playing our positions and really learning them and seeing something over and over and over and over again. And pretty soon, that's how you learn to play it. You know, And if you see something one time in practice, and, you know, it's hard to say, tell a guy go out there and perfect that on game day on that one play and if you've always seen it one time. So you can't take away everything. You've got to try to take away what they do best and try to execute. You know, we talked last week a lot about the zone rate and how you hope it looked better the second time around the defense against. Do you feel like the defense as a whole took a step, not even just against that fight, but by learning? Sure, absolutely. Does that, does that make sense? Maybe that wasn't no, the you, you, that makes perfect sense. Absolutely. I showed them some Philadelphia film last week. Okay, if you think this team's not going to do that, when they when Philadelphia had success with it, this is a copycat league. If you think that offensive coordinator not looking at what Philadelphia did and said we can do that and we don't correct it, absolutely. I showed them Philly film, not much, but a little bit stuff that we did not do well, didn't do assignment well, and we had to coach better, and so um, and. Luckily, I think a couple times that they did do something that Philly did, we seem to be on top of it. So it's 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 that sort of thing. That's I mean, coaching. I mean, I was talking to Stephen Means yesterday, and he was kind of talking to that about how it was one of those things where they wanted to take ownership of being able to stop the escape because that was such a big part of the Philly game. I mean, how much do you think to that end? You, you did see guys kind of take over that ownership of being like, you know what, we need to get better right here in this spot. Well, I think a lot of them. I, I thought, um, you know, I, I saw guys, even during the week, I thought guys were much more in tune to exactly what we wanted and what we had to do, and this is how, this is what we got to do to win the game. Here's our keys to the game, and we're got, we, we need to execute our keys. 
if they beat us some other way, if they beat you left-handed because, okay, we, we, they, we've never seen that ever. And they beat you, you know, they throw something at you you've never seen. Hopefully your keys and your technique and all that stuff will carry you through. But if all of a sudden they change offense, but in this league, you know, teams aren't going to change the offense. I mean, if you're an offensive coordinator and you're going in after a loss, be like a defensive coordinator. Okay, if we went in and all of a sudden decided to change everything, the players would look at you like, well, why did we just practice all this other stuff for eight weeks? I thought it was supposed to be good. I mean, you'd lose all credibility as a coordinator for doing something like that. So guys aren't going to change a lot. I mean, they most all the coordinators in this league, especially offensive coordinators, have a playbook about that thick, and they can go to a lot of different stuff. So, but I thought the guys tried to take ownership and try to really during even during the week, I felt that going into that game. Also, wanted to ask um, off topic, but about Foye specifically, and I was just curious from your perspective, how do you feel like his, how he sees what's happening in front of him, like his vision, like how do you feel like that benefits his. Specific game. Getting better and better. He's a smart, smart guy. Um, he's got all the tools to be, you know, the, the type of Mike linebacker that you want. He's big. He tries to play physical. He's smart. He studies. He knows the stuff. You can tell him. Um, just like everybody, I mean, you, you tell them, and then they may not do it right the first time, but the second time he's going to, if he makes a mistake, he's going to clean it up. He's not going to do it the second time. That's what you ask for. Um, so it's just I think he's I think he is really progressing into what we expected him to be at a Mike linebacker. I really feel good about him, and I've had some really good Mike linebackers in my day, and I really feel like as a young linebacker, this guy's got a very very bright future. What are some of those traits that you really like about him? That kind of just what I said. He can run. He's physical. He's smart. He's starting to get the more he plays the position the more he learns how to key and read and here's where I got to be and here's where I got to be. You know, some of these times you, people just forget that, I mean, it's not like this guy has played Mike Linebacker his whole life out there, you know, in our, and especially then in a new system. I mean, you got to go through some stuff a little bit to learn the system. And like I say, it's, it's sometimes I get a little frustrated and, and people – kind of thinking that all this stuff is just automatically going to just, man, they're going to go out there and it's going to go like that. It never does. I mean, it's, it takes a while for everybody to learn how to play your position. Did you guys write really well when you came out of college? Do you think you're a better writer now than you were when you came out of college? I would probably say you think that. Well, what would make it any different? This profession isn't any different. The health professions are that way. The more you play it and the more you do it, the more you write, the better you write. You say, ah, you know, I don't like the way I did this, and then you change it. I mean, what's, what's the difference? Everybody gets so, you know, immediate gratification. This guy's got to go walk in and do. It, it, it frustrates me a little bit uh, when Isaiah people Oliver? say that. Sorry, do you think Isaiah Oliver is a good example of that? Here's somebody who kind of is just now coming into his own and being able to feel confident in this spot. I mean, it wasn't an immediate thing for him. It's something that he grew into. No, and, and there's a lot of guys that. And even though they're a corner or they're a safety, this is a, this is a different system than they played in before. So it's, it's, it's different. It takes a while. And you can talk about OTAs and training camp and stuff all you want. It's playing the game that makes a difference. It just does. You know, and, and like I say, uh, I get a little frustrated at times, you know, um, with it. it. You know, give the guy a chance. Let him learn it, you know. Kind of following up on that a little bit, you, you've been known and you talk about it at camp about having input from players. Is, is their knowledge of the defense enough at this point where they can do that? Or is there a certain threshold of, in a season or in knowledge of a scheme where you can then rely on that? It's getting better and better. That's all I can tell you is it's getting, it gets better and better every week that we go in there and we meet and we, they see something and then, start to understand it a little bit more. And, you know, and yet you're trying not to overwhelm them with a bunch of new stuff. You know, once they learn the system, then you can tweak something a little bit because then they kind of, oh, I understand. But until they really understand exactly how everything works, it's hard to tweak something. So you, you just got to be careful and not go crazy. Like, like I say, it just, you know, I just, well, the, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to answer the question the best best that I can for you. I just I get I get a little like I say I get a little frustrated. Um, right, that's why I was that's why I was asking. 
But I get frustrated from outside sources really not stopping and thinking before they say something about somebody or something. And, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's not fair to the players or to the staff that is trying like hell to build a hell of a program that everybody's proud of. And I'm a little different standing up in front of you because I told you there's two things. One, I'm at the age in my life where I could really give a rat, you know what, what, what somebody says. Second thing is, is that I also, um, I told you guys up front that I know you guys have a job to do, and I respect that. And I would always try to like, try to rather inform you as to something that's going on and, and without giving away a scheme or a trade secret or something. But I'd rather do that and be polite and do that than I would some of the coaches that stand up here and go, yeah, yeah, next question, no. I, you know, so I feel like I've always had a good rapport with me because I felt like I tried to explain it. But I have a hard time, I really have a hard time with respect when the first comment I hear on Monday morning is from a guy that says, well, finally the Atlanta Falcons won a game after 10 months. I didn't know we played in April and March. I forgot that Tampa Bay didn't win one for seven months either. I mean, why, why not just say, why is the sensationalism? Why not just say, hey, we finally, after three weeks, we won a game. It's 10 months. Throw that out there to the fans and all that. So why would you say that? And then the next thing out of the comment out of his mouth was it was an ugly win. And, but, but you don't have to describe an ugly win. So I don't really know what was ugly. Was it ugly that Isaiah stripped the ball in a two minute right before the half and gave the offense the ball in a 37? Was it ugly win that everybody talked about Dante Fowler in the last six months being only two sacks last year and he's already got two strip sacks in the first three games? Was it an ugly win that we all I heard in the off season was how we couldn't finish a game? How about the offense driving the length of the field after they scored on us to score? We stop them in two minutes, which everybody says defense can't do, and then the offense goes down and kicks the field. Is that an ugly win? And we take a defensive back who played safety for me during preseason, and I put him out there at corner for our starting corner and did a really good job. What part of that was an ugly win? And the guy that said I wouldn't know if it was an ugly win or a good win. It's a win. It's a win. Everybody's ugly. Every game is not going to be perfect. So I don't understand that kind of feedback or that the expectation, hey, the expectation is to win. We all have that expectation. But there's also a reality sometimes that people got to learn how to do something before they really become proficient at it. And that's what we're trying to do. And we're not trying to change things and not trying to do a bunch of stuff. We're trying to get better every week. And we got better the second week and we got better the third week, and I hope we get better the fourth week. But that's what we're striving to do. And I just don't understand people that say they support the Falcons that you can say that kind of stuff in the public. That bothers me. I'm being honest with you guys. I'm telling you what's in, in my heart. Okay, probably shouldn't, probably come back to haunt me. Somebody will print something and somebody else will take offense to it, and I'll hear about it. I could really give, you know, you know what? But the truth of it, that's the truth, though. That's the truth. If you're over there writing for your paper or whatever you're writing for, and somebody's constantly criticizing you, telling you it's not good writing, what's that make you feel like? And do it in the public. You know, if it's one thing, it's the editor just telling you one-on-one -on -one in the office, but if he says it to the whole daggone people, the staff at the newspaper or something, or where you're working, how would that make you feel? You know, that. You're not helping the cause. If you really want to see the Falcons win, I'm not saying don't write stuff that's true. If we play bad, we play bad. The Philadelphia game, we did not play well. We didn't coach well, we didn't play well. But then don't make stuff up. Don't be sensational as, well, they haven't won a game in 10 months. No kidding. We want to play for three weeks. I mean, I, I, don't understand. I don't understand. You know what that is? That's all about the guy that said it, patting himself on the back, thinking he's either funny or clever. That's what that is. And I don't think that's really good media. Is that my piece? Okay.
And I wasn't pissed off about it, didn't say anything. <laughs> what? No, I'm frustrated with it. Because you're in there busting your butt, and the players are busting their butt, and then when you finally do win, how many people in the press conference after the game said congratulations to Art? Zero. Zero. First question was about Pitts. In a win, the man won his first game as a head NFL football coach, and not one person said, hey, coach, congratulations on your win, and then asked the question. Not one. I think, because he said Michael is the only way I know, you ask, you did ask about what it felt like to have your first win, I think, or something like that. And you also said something about the defense, you know, and it was, I thought it was decent. I think it was you, because I heard him say Michael, but I don't know. But I'm just saying, how hard would it have been as a person, to a person who gives you the time of day as a head coach to be, talk to the media after a game to say congratulations, coach, on your first win, and then ask a question? None. Zero. I'm just saying, how would you feel? You started this talking about building and patience and patience and building. How do you look at what's the timeline in your head for this process? There isn't any. There can't be a timeline. There's there's no timeline. I'm not sitting there saying, oh, this, uh, you know, I don't know if it's going to be. I'm hoping it's right away. You can't put a timeline. It's like when you ask a question on a player, when's that player going to be ready to play? I don't know. He'll be ready to play when we think he's ready to play. You know, we just need to keep doing what we're doing and do it. I mean, I could go through uh, the, probably the five guys that I've respected as a defensive coordinator the most ever in this league are Dick LeBeau, Jimmy Johnson, Wade Phillips, uh, Kiffin, and um, I'm trying to think of the fifth guy that I know. That I, I've, I've contacted all of you. Do you know, like all those guys, when they first went to a team, things didn't go well? Just look them up. I ain't going to tell you something that's, I wouldn't tell you something that's not true. Look them up. Dick LeBeau did the best. I mean, and, and Wade, because he was a coordinator at so many damn places, but he was here too. I don't know. You guys were around. I don't know. How'd that go? How'd that go? Okay. So I'm just saying that there's a bunch of guys that are out there, too, that, you know, mentioned about, well, you know, boy, we should be just like, we should be like this. We should be like, nobody is. Offense, defense, especially, nobody is. Come on. It's just, they got to learn it. And, but there's not a timeline. I, hey, I hope we're, you know, 14 and 2. Uh, that's what we're shooting for. I mean, every week you're shooting to go out there and win. We're never shooting to go out there and go, boy, I hope we improve this week. I don't really care if we win or lose. You go out there to improve. And if you keep improving, you will win. If you don't, you won't. But to, to abort something or try to not follow through on it and make the guys better every week, that, that's the wrong way to go. All those guys had a system. We all have a system. And the one thing I learned from all those guys, being around Bill Belichick was another one, 5-11 and 11 his first year. So I'm just saying I've learned from all those guys. I've been around, blessed to be around not only good guys that I worked for with Belichick and Saban and those guys, but I also spent a lot of time talking to Dick LeBeau. I spent a lot of time talking to Wade Phillips, Jimmy Johnson. I've talked to those guys because I always wanted to know what they were thinking, and all of them is we have a system. I believe in that system. If you don't believe in the system and you're changing it all the time, then you have no belief. So I have a system, and I'm going to work that system, and I'm going to make sure I'm going to keep working that system because I believe in it. And if, you know, if it doesn't work after a couple of years, then you're looking for another job. But knock on wood, I've never looked for another job. Is that type never. Of patience something you had to learn as a young coach? I you have to learn patience in the process? I still don't have it. You can tell right now I don't have it. I, I mean, I don't. I, I'm not, I wished I was better at it. I've learned that I have to do that. I'm a very impatient person, ask my wife, but, I, but I've but i learned that I have to stay patient with it. It's like in a ball game sometimes, okay, you call, you call a, a, a zone coverage and they hit a pass on it. Do you never come back to that same zone coverage again? Or let's say you call man coverage and they hit a deep one on you and they score. So you're never going to call that call again? No. The guy probably didn't. It's either technique or something happened or the guy made a great catch. That catch down on the sideline last week against T.J. Green, that's a hell of a catch by that guy, hell of a catch. 
So am I going to look at that and go, oh, man, we gave up a 30-yarder there. I can't call cover one anymore. No, I called it two plays later. Had nothing to do with it. That's what patience is, is in calling a game. I've learned probably more in calling a game to be patient than I have patience about, you know, not winning. I, I mean, I've only ever been through one losing season in my whole NFL career. And yet we were sixth on defense in that, that year on, in the league. So I don't have a lot of patience. I don't have patience for losing. Neither does Hart, neither does any coach. But I don't uh, necessarily mean patience in losing. I mean patience in installation, patience in building. What you gotta, you well, what you got to do is you got to look at it, and when you put something in, it's, if, if, it, if it's a problem over and over and over again, then you got to move on to something else. But I think you keep trying it until you, you're convinced it's not a good – it's not good for this team, I think is what it is, is that do we do all the stuff that we did at Baltimore? Do we do all the stuff that we did at Tennessee? No, because right now we're not ready to do all that stuff. We're just not, okay? And I kind of learned that in the first game. I probably did a little too much. And so we're just not ready for that. So until we're ready for that, then we'll take the next step. But because we backed off a little bit, we actually played better in the next two games. So. You know, that proved to me a little bit about, okay, yeah, that's, that's the right approach to take. So I hope I answered your question yeah, there. That, that what up? You guys had enough of me already? <laughs> 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 All right. I appreciate you guys. All Thank right, you. Coach, take care.